With the new Garmin Venue 2 Plus, Garmin is moving more and more into full smartwatch territory as the Venue 2 Plus now includes a speaker and a microphone, allowing you to take calls on your wrist and it also has integrated voice assistance. However, the price tag is also higher with a release price of $450, which is even more than what you pay for the baseline model of the latest Apple Watch. The release price is also $50 more than the very similar Garmin Venue 2. However, in practice, the actual price difference between the two is actually closer to $100. So is the Venue 2 Plus worth that kind of money? Well, to help you answer that question, I'll scientifically test the accuracy of the different features of the Garmin Venue 2 Plus. I'll start by looking at the sleep tracking accuracy, then move on to the heart rate measurements, oxygen saturation measurements, and GPS accuracy. I'll also compare it to the normal Garmin Venue 2 and to the Apple Watch 7. And finally, I'll briefly compare it to the new and much cheaper Garmin VivoMove Sport. Spoiler alert, the VivoMove Sport actually vastly outperforms the Garmin Venue 2 Plus in one specific area. Let's start by looking at the sleep tracking of the Garmin Venue 2 Plus. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. The reason I will start with the sleep tracking test is because I'm uniquely positioned to test that feature. Here I show an overview of the sleep tracking accuracy. On top are the sleep stages as recorded by an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves. And on the vertical axis are the sleep stages according to the Garmin Venue 2 Plus. I wore both the EEG device and the Garmin Venue 2 Plus to bed for 6 nights and I'll see how close the predictions of the Venue 2 Plus are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was predicted as each sleep stage by the Venue 2 Plus. If they were to perfectly agree, all values along the diagonal should be 100%, but as you can see this is far from true. First of all, we see that only 19% of what was deep sleep in reality was also predicted as deep sleep by the Venue 2 Plus. In fact, almost all of what was deep sleep was detected as light sleep by the Garmin Venue 2 Plus. We can see that even better by looking at the individual nights, like in this example night right here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages along the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the Venue 2 Plus. I've highlighted all real deep sleep in purple here and as you can see I had some deep sleep in the beginning of the night and almost none of that was detected by the Venue 2 Plus. Now out of all six nights I tested the device, this second night represents the best night in terms of deep sleep tracking where all my deep sleep was indeed detected though some extra deep sleep was detected by the Venue 2 Plus. However most nights are more like this where no or almost none of my deep sleep was detected. As you can also see in this example night right here all my deep sleep is missed. Light sleep detection was okay with about 60% of the light sleep correctly detected. However about 30% of the light sleep was detected as either deep sleep or REM sleep. The remaining 10% was detected by the Garmin Venue 2 Plus as me being awake. Now REM sleep detection was pretty bad as well with only about one fourth of the REM sleep correctly detected. Most REM sleep was actually detected as being light sleep by the Venue 2 Plus. That is also what we see looking at the individual nights. The real REM sleep marked here in red was not correctly detected by the Venue 2 Plus and actually most of it is totally missed. This also means we cannot really see the sleep cycles. You go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep, which is marked here in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep, marked here in red. As you can see, I had one, two, three, four complete sleep cycles this night, but based on the data from just the Venue 2 Plus, you would not be able to see this at all. And we see the same thing in this second example night right here. The REM sleep does not match at all between the watch and the EEG device, making sleep cycle detection impossible. Awake detection was quite okay, with about two-thirds of the awake moments correctly detected. About a quarter of my awake moments was detected as light sleep. However, this is not a major issue since light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. If we look at the individual nights, we indeed see that the longer awake moments appear to be detected, but many of the shorter ones are missed. And we basically see the same pattern for this second night. The longer awake moment is detected, the shorter ones are missed, and it even detects an extra awake moment. Now at the same time that the Venue 2 Plus was released, Garmin also released the VivoMove Sport. This hybrid smartwatch is much cheaper, coming in at $180. I've been testing the VivoMove Sport at the same time as the Venue 2 Plus and looking at the results, the VivoMove Sport outperforms the Venue 2 Plus by miles when it comes to sleep tracking. I'll release a complete review of the VivoMove Sport in about two weeks, but I'll briefly show you the difference with the Venue 2 Plus in this video. Here are the results we were just looking at for the Venue 2 Plus on the left and now the results for the 
the Vivo Move Sport on the right. On top for both devices are the results according to the EEG headband and on the bottom the results according to each of the devices. Now this is the same night for both devices and in purple is the deep sleep. And as you can see the Vivo Move Sport picked up almost perfectly on my deep sleep whereas the Venue 2 Plus detected none of the deep sleep. And we see something similar for REM sleep. Now in red I marked the real REM sleep with again on the bottom left the Venue 2 Plus and on the bottom right the Vivo Move Sport. As you can see the Vivo Move Sport nicely detected all the four REM sleep segments which also would allow us to see the sleep cycles. Whereas the Venue 2 Plus basically detected none of it. I have no real explanation for why the Vivo Move Sport is so much better at tracking my sleep. Looking at all the other nights I ran these tests, the much cheaper Vivo Move Sport consistently outperforms the Venue 2 Plus in sleep tracking. I would expect both these watches to have the same algorithm, but maybe Garmin indeed uses different releases of the sleep tracking algorithm for both watches. If this is the case, then they should really port over the one used in the Vivo Move Sport to the Venue 2 Plus. Now I did wear the Venue 2 Plus on my dominant hand and the Vivo Move Sport on my non-dominant one. However, I cannot imagine this causes such a big inconsistency. Now, if you have any experience with the sleep tracking of different Garmin watches, I'd be really interested to hear about it in the comments below. We can also compare the accuracy of the Venue 2 Plus to other devices, which is displayed in this graph. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average accuracy over the four individual sleep stages. And on the vertical axis, we have the accuracy of the worst sleep stage. The better a device, the more to the top right it is. And as you can see, the best devices include different Fitbits. In this case, the Fitbit Sense, Inspire 2 and Charge 5, which all perform about equally well. These are joined by the Whoopstrap 3.0, 4.0 and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. As you can see, the Garmin Venue 2 Plus is really on the bottom left right here. The Garmin Venue 2 performed a bit better, though it's still roughly in the same area. Now, honestly, I would have expected both to perform about the same unless Garmin released firmware updates in the meantime. Now, next, if we also include the Garmin Vivo Move Sport, we indeed see that this performed significantly better than the Venue 2 Plus and the Venue 2 by a comfortable margin. One thing I noticed is that the Venue 2 Plus consistently detected me as falling asleep about 15 minutes too late each and every night. That is displayed here. On the vertical axis we have the dates of the nights I tested the Venue 2 Plus and on the horizontal axis is the time difference between the EEG device and the Venue 2 Plus for waking up in yellow and falling asleep in blue. So a positive number means that the Venue 2 Plus detected me as falling asleep or waking up later than in reality and a negative number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep earlier. As you can see since all the blue dots are positive and roughly in the same range this indicates the watch consistently detected me as falling asleep about 10 to 18 minutes too late. Though the sleep tracking is not great for the Venue 2 Plus, there's one thing that the previous Venue 2 really impressed me with, namely the heart rate tracking. The Venue 2 Plus should perform about the same, but let's see if this is the case. In the next tests, I'll compare the heart rate of the Venue 2 Plus against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can record my heart rate very accurately. But before I show you those results, if you're finding this video helpful, a sub to the channel would definitely make my heart beat faster. My goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of next month, and your support would of course be greatly appreciated but it's totally up to you. We will start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement and will therefore produce less noise. Here we see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Venue 2 Plus. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line at roughly the same value for the Polo H10 and the Venue 2 Plus. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, there's a pretty good agreement between the ECG chest strap and the Venue 2 Plus, as most points are along the blue line. However, interestingly, we also see that there are some points right here above the blue line. This indicates that while my heart rate was low in reality, the Venue 2 Plus detected the too low heart rate in these moments. Now we can see why that is by looking at the individual rides. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Venue 2 Plus. As you can see for most of the rides the two lines overlap more or less perfectly and you can basically not see the red line of the Venue 2 Plus at all because of the perfect overlap. However here in the beginning it does not fully detect a dip in my heart rate when I took a break and sat down. And we basically see the same thing for this second session. During my first break, the watch had trouble detecting my lowest heart rate. And this is a more or less consistent pattern. During this third ride, it even detected double the heart rate that it should have. All in all, this is still pretty good, though the artifacts it shows are kinda weird. 
Next, looking at cycling outside, for which the overview is displayed here, we also see a reasonably good agreement between the chest strap and the Venue 2 Plus. Now, cycling outside is much more difficult for watches since it involves much more movement and therefore much more noise. The watch also tends to shift more on my wrist, making it harder for it to accurately detect my heart rate. However, as we can see in this plot, compared to many other watches, the Venue 2 Plus does quite well, which we can confirm by looking at the individual bike rides, of which this is the first example. As you can see, there's quite a good overlap between both of the devices. We see mostly the same thing for this second ride, though it is not quite as good with slightly more deviations, for instance here but also here. Again this third ride right here is very good and most rides are either that good or pretty good like this ride right here. The only exercise where the Venue 2 Plus struggles is weightlifting. That is displayed here and as you can see most points are indeed close to the blue line however in the higher heart rate ranges there are quite a few points below the blue line and that is because it cannot always detect the peaks in my heart rate that go with each of the sets of exercises i do as you can see in this example weightlifting session right here it cannot pick up on these peaks but we've basically seen that for almost all of the watches i've tested so far with just a few exceptions now the Venue 2 Plus is still amongst the better watches out there, but I would still say it lags behind the Apple Watch and the Huawei Watch GT3 when it comes to weightlifting. So the Garmin Venue 2 Plus performed quite well, however for some reason it did not perform quite as well as the original Venue 2 performed for me. Now to visualize that, here are the results for the Garmin Venue 2 Plus for spinning we were just looking at. And if we now switch to the Garmin Venue 2, we get much better results. Even though both are good, the results for the Venue 2 are definitely better than those for the Venue 2 Plus. Now I did have much more data for the Venue 2 than for the Venue 2 Plus, which is why I made the points more transparent in this plot so you could more clearly see where most of the points are. Now here here are the results for cycling outside for the Venue 2 Plus and here are the results for the Venue 2 and for this activity I would say that the Venue 2 Plus and the Venue 2 appear to perform about the same. Finally this is weightlifting for the Venue 2 Plus and here the Venue 2 does appear to perform a bit better. Now I did have a lot more data for the original Venue 2 and the way I exported the data from the Garmin databases was also different. I'll keep exploring why this is and I'll update you once I find out more. Now finally, I do want to highlight the performance of the Apple Watch Series 7 when it comes to heart rate tracking, since this might be an alternative smartwatch you're considering. Here's the accuracy of the Apple Watch Series 7 during spinning, and as you can see, it's almost perfect. We see something similar for cycling outside, the deviations are slightly larger, but all in all, it's spot on. And we see the same thing for weightlifting right here, which is again amazing for a wrist-worn wearable. Now I should note that during weightlifting the Apple Watch sometimes loses the heart rate signal briefly when doing a set so it sometimes misses part of the peak, however overall it's still the number one wrist worn heart rate tracker. Now the Garmin Venue 2 Plus is definitely amongst the top heart rate trackers, however it's still not quite as good as the Apple Watch. What about the SpO2 or oxygen saturation measurements? Over the last week I measured my oxygen saturation at ground level in the morning and in the evening. At the same time I also recorded my oxygen saturation with a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. At ground level my saturation should be within my normal range which is generally between 97 and 100%. The Venue 2 Plus should not detect any low values during this test. On the left are the 16 measurements taken with the Venue 2 Plus and on the right the measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. As you can see the Venue 2 Plus quite often detects a too low SpO2 value. Most of its values are quite a bit lower than those measured with the finger pulse oximeter. The results for the SpO2 measurements of the Venue 2 Plus are still somewhat inconclusive. In a future test I'll see if it can detect a low oxygen saturation in a low oxygen environment. What about GPS tracking? I tested that while cycling to and from work and I wanted to test two things. One, how long does it take for the watch to get a GPS signal? And two, how well GPS signals overlap when cycling the same route multiple times? That is displayed here for four times I cycled to work. I started the activity the moment I was ready to leave and I did not provide the watch with any extra time to acquire the signal. The green marker indicates the moment it connected to the GPS signal and as you can see it almost always acquired the signal almost instantly, which is good. When we zoom in we see it needs a few seconds to get an accurate location but after that the paths appear to overlap quite well. As you can see here for instance and this indicates a good consistency. Also right here we see a pretty good overlap and during this section right here the overlap is almost perfect. There are some moments with a bit more deviation but overall this is not bad at all. We can look at the same thing when I cycled back from work. Again it acquired a signal really quickly but it needed a few seconds to get an accurate position. Once a signal is acquired, the consistency between the paths is pretty good. Though there were a few moments with a bit more deviation, overall it's quite good. As we can also see here for instance. 
overall the GPS tracking of the Garmin Venue 2 Plus is quite good and I would even say it's amongst the best trackers out there. However, taking into account all features, I have really mixed feelings about the Garmin Venue 2 Plus. For some reason I cannot explain, the original Venue 2 performed better at heart rate tracking when I tested it a few months back, even though the sensors are the same as those on the Venue 2 Plus. I'm not sure if anything changed internally in the watch that could cause some interference or if something changed in the processing of the signal. Alternatively, it could just be a fluke and with some more testing it could perform better. Still, the Venue 2 Plus is among some of the better wrist-worn heart rate trackers out there. On the other hand, the sleep tracking is pretty bad and weirdly the much cheaper Garmin Vivomove Sport performs consistently better at that. Nevertheless, if you're a runner or a cyclist and you want to track your heart rate and your GPS position, I think the Garmin Venue 2 Plus is a good choice. However, since I personally do not really use the voice assistant integration and I'm also not a fan of taking calls from my wrist or playing music on a watch, I'd rather opt for the original Venue 2, which you can probably find for $100 less than the Venue 2 Plus. Now, if you're an Android user, you might actually also want to take a look at the Huawei Watch GT3, which has great heart rate tracking and that video is linked here. If you want the best smart watch experience and great heart rate tracking, the Apple Watch Series 7 is an even better choice. However, the Apple Watch has much poorer battery life and also requires an iPhone. Now, I hope that this video provided some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.